Good afternoon and welcome to our Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour podcast. My name is Donna and I am your host. I am very excited to introduce our guest today, Dr. Cynthia Rios. Dr. Rios is a native Houstonian who's been in practice since 2006, a fellow of the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. She provides a full range of gynecological and obstetrical care, ranging from well woman exams to complex diagnostic services. Dr. Rios is also a BioT certified, providing patients with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy and guidance. Her practice philosophy is to give her patients holistic, personalized care. And because she is so involved with her patients, she offers three locations in which she serves her patients at Grand Parkway, Liberty Street, Oak Bend Medical Center, Jackson, and behind Costco's in Sugarland. Dr. Rios, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Donna. I'm excited to have this talk with you too. Well, today we're going to be talking about endometriosis because we hear it a lot and I'm not so sure we know exactly what it is or how it is. So what is endometriosis, Dr. Rios? Okay, so endometriosis is when the cells that should be on the inside lining of the uterus are scattered out throughout the woman's body. So it can be um, on her uterus, on her ovaries, on her bladder, um, the intestines. Some women have even had case reports where Um, those cells are in their lungs. So every time this woman has a menstrual cycle, she starts bleeding from these glands and it causes her a lot of pain and blood to accumulate in places that it shouldn't. Well, how would someone know if they had endometriosis? The majority of women present to us with painful periods. They normally have bloating in their abdomen right at the, around the time of their cycle. They either have um, pain with urination, so they have pain when they go to pee, um, right when they're having their cycle, or pain when they're having bowel movements. Also, sometimes people just have pain during intercourse. Very rarely, some women have no symptoms of pain, but have trouble getting pregnant, and that's when they get diagnosed. So can young women be predisposed for endometriosis? Yeah, so family history is very important because we know that this can run in families. So if somebody has a mom or a sister with endometriosis, we know that they're at higher risk for it. So at what age would you recommend a young lady coming in to see an OB-GYN because they have a strong history of endometriosis or any other woman type complication? So the earlier, the better. Um, Definitely with anything like this, the sooner that we can see it, we can actually stop the disease from progressing and stop them from having issues. So normally we'd like to see patients as young as 14 um, if they're having issues with their cycle. You know, otherwise, once they start having symptoms, usually about 20, 21, we, we can see them then. Okay. So what are the treatments for endometriosis? So so one of the mainstays of treatment is trying to deal with the pain. You know, um, a lot of women have the severe pain and it keeps them from going to work and doing all these things. So most of the time when they come in, they're fairly young and we know that they're having painful periods. So we'll start them on birth control pills. Uh, Sometimes we'll start something like NSAIDs, you know, um, So being like ibuprofen or something to treat the pain. Then if things get more severe, they're older, you can do other types of um, contraception like the Mirena, the Skyla, these progesterone only. The big thing is we don't want them having a cycle. Um, Now, depending on the severity, there's also other medications that we can do like Depo-Lupron, you know, other uh, GNR agonists and antagonists that can help stop the cycle and actually sometimes even throw the patients into menopause um, for a time just to kind of let their body heal from all this. So 
Are women who have endometriosis, are they able to have children? Yes, they can. Um, Like I said, you know, it is something that we look for and we can treat just depending on the severity of the disease. And then now with all the advancements in IVF, it does not mean what it used to mean where women were having to get their um, uteruses taken out and their ovaries taken out and being unable to have children. Now with technology and all the advancements, I frequently deliver patients that have had endometriosis. So it's not as bad as it once was. And it also sounds women are notorious for kind of living with things. Yes. (laughs) And not getting to the doctor really quickly. It sounds like it would be good to get in as early as can and form a habit with your OBGYN, a relationship to get all of your exams and breast exams and everything so that things work. Yeah. And and that's the thing is that we like to connect with our patients. I know, um, especially when they're teenagers, you know, just exactly what you're saying. You know, it's usually we tell moms, you know, hey, bring in your daughter, you know, when they're 15, 16 years old, um, you know, just that way we can establish that relationship. Now, ACOG doesn't recommend that we do pap smears anymore until they're 21. So, you know, a lot of these visits are done close on. So, you know, they they can just come in and chat and, you know, have another resource, have another adult in their lives where they can ask those questions that they may be embarrassed to ask mom. Or like we're finding out with like endometriosis, sometimes they ask mom like, hey, my period really hurts. But if mom's also had endometriosis, mom will say, oh, that's normal. I had that too. And so we kind of need to re-educate them and say, no, that's not actually normal. No, you shouldn't be bleeding that heavy, you know, things like that. So it's always good to get them in younger, even if it's just for like an office consult. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be a good resource for young women to get in with an OBGYN, form that rapport, and be able to ask those questions that we're not going to ask mom or that's right, (laughs) those kind of things. Great. Is there a way to prevent endometriosis? No, there's really no way to prevent it. It's just kind of like we think genetics, okay? Um, There are also some other theories that it's menstrual flow that backs up into your body, but no, there's really nothing that we can do to prevent it. What happens if it goes untreated? If you put up with the pain and, and everything else? Yeah, so, and, and we have that happen a lot. Um, so like I was saying, there's blood that can accumulate. Sometimes women can develop what are called endometriomas. Basically, it's a large collection of blood that is in their belly. Sometimes they'll come into the ER for severe pain or, um, you know, have to have emergency surgery to get that blood drained, you know. So those are the things, you know. And then, of course, infertility at the end of it, where they're unable to have children because everything's so scarred and inflamed. Okay, so it's very important. And I'm sure there's other reasons to come in and see you right away. I know we have ovarian cancer and just regular women's health. Would you like to expand on that, Annie? Yeah. So um, like I said, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has said, you know, 21 for your pap smear and then making sure that women come in, um, you know, making sure that your menstrual cycle is regular because that's almost as important as a vital sign. Um, So making sure that you have a period every month, making sure that your period doesn't last more than seven days, making sure that you're not using overnight pads or using pads and tampons, you know, that's not normal either. You know, we want to get you in sometimes embarrassing issues with vaginal discharge. You know, if you're wondering how much discharge is normal discharge, pain with sex, you know, um, some of these things are real easy fixes for us, you know, but we, like you said, women like to deal with all this stuff and just keep dealing with it. And, um, you know, it's very important for women to take care of themselves because a woman usually takes care of the family, you know, as moms, as grandparents, you know, as daughters, we're usually the caretakers and we're out there trying to take care of everyone. So it's important for us to get in and take care of ourselves. I know for some women, cause I hear it all the time, probably feel that way myself too. It's uncomfortable and embarrassing a little bit to go out there and say, you know, mm, got this, but I'm sure you've heard it all, seen it all. And quite frankly, you're not surprised by any of it, but there to help. 
Yeah. And that's our main goal. And I tell all my patients jokingly when they come in, they, they're like, oh, I'm embarrassed. I'll say, well, you're the only one that's embarrassed. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, we're <laughs> all embarrassed. And that's the thing I tell them too. Wouldn't it be shocking if you weren't embarrassed, a little embarrassed, you know what I mean? So, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, we're all women. And that's the other thing that I think um, the majority of us OBGYNs now are female. And so we also understand what it's like from your perspective as well. And we really try to work hard to make it as comfortable as possible. You know, um, we don't use those old metal speculums anymore. We don't use that. You know, I've had somebody ask me about that, you know, um, we use those disposable plastic ones. We warm them up. We try to make it as comfortable as possible. And it, it should truly just be a little bit uncomfortable during the exam. Um, but definitely we try to, you know, and know we know that it's an intimate part of your life and you're sharing details with us that you don't really want out on the web or published or anything like that. So there's also confidentiality as well. Great to know because some of these diseases, if caught early, are so preventable, especially ovarian cancer, breast cancers, all of those endometriosis sounds like it can be managed and all of those things. The key is to get in early yes, and get with a good ob and bond. Dr. Rios, your patients think a lot of you and love you to death. And I know you're a very busy physician, but I know you always have room for more. So I encourage women to get their appointments and come in and see the doctors. Dr. Rios, you practice with several OBGYNs. I work with Dr. Fagbon, the medical director of our practice, and he's been around forever. And we jokingly tell him he works with all women. He has daughters at home. And so he's practically a woman himself. We'll tell him that. <laughs> uh, and then Dr. Mosqueda, um, she's joined us. She's wonderful. She's lovely. Dr. Lou, Dr. Vigil also takes call with us. She's also here in the community. And so I think we have a great group of OBGYNs here in the community. Well, we're glad to have you in the community. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience before we close? Well, I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And also, I wanted to thank all my patients out there. And I know they love me because I love them right back. And I'm just glad we're out there able to educate people and hopefully get people feeling better. Awesome. We'll be posting after the podcast a way to contact Dr. Rios and her partners. If you need to make an appointment, I encourage every woman to make this year the best year ever and go see an ob -GYN. Think about yourself for a change. I want to thank you, Dr. Rios, for joining us today. And a big thank you to all our listeners for tuning in. Beginning now, set an intention and a relentless focus on living your life as the greatest person you can be in all situations. Please join us next week. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you for joining us today on Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast and invite you to email us at oakbendhappyhourpodcast at obmc.org with any questions or topics that you would like for us to cover. Remember, you can find us here each Friday at 5. Until next week, be mindful and stay healthy.